something comes up like, for example, the, the, the budget, and you get budgetized for about a week, and, and, and the, something else comes along, and you get budgetized again. And, but they preclude the possibility of other interests. Hi dear George, how you doing? Go upstairs. Oh yeah. yeah. I brought my video friend with me. Oh that then. Yeah. Oh, fine. Fine day, eh? It's a great day. Yeah. That was just something I lying down in the bed. Oh. I had a, a great night the other night. Um uh, on DeMarco actually. Yeah? He was over here. And I went to uh went uh, with a party I had a bunch of his his what, what's the word yeah acolytes, is that right? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, hey, you look well Kenny. Yeah oh, thanks. I see you're standing up your boots holding you up yeah. Yeah yeah. Uh -huh. So you had an evening with Ricky? Well we went in a boat. Oh good we nice. Went, went in this I'll show you a picture of the boats lying there. We went in that boat. So what was the what was the form? Was it was it a kind of adventure? It was a kind of talking shop aboard the boat. We went for the evening. I ended up by spending the night in the bloody boat. Oh, that is great, isn't it? Uh, you're filming all this? Some of it, yeah. yeah. Mm. The high spot for me, there's a high, we're all supposed to record the trips. But there's not here, it's doing me drawings of a place and a place. But they all had wee notebooks and I never had, I never had none. I didn't expect to be doing it. But I picked up three stones, because I like stones. <laughs> I've got the stones out there. And I was thinking of the, the Maids of Butte. I like the uh, story of the Maids of Butte. Remind me. Oh, Christ, Mum. Specs. I'm cracking up, Kenny. Definitely cracking up. The captain says to me one day, we were passing the maids, only they weren't the maids then. They had their clothes on. Peter, what do you think of them two stones on the hull side? Tremendous. I sold one of them, I got two anvils. I sold an anvil yesterday. Ah, uh, you got a good price? 50 quid. We made it in the end, 32 spires, 26 in this direction here from the south, 6 here from the north, this here, is this stream is the, the mark of the border between, in this case, the north and the south of Ireland. We can argue with I like that place over there. This is a good place too. Right, Kenny, I think I'll take a full deep. You know every fucking thing, don't you? Aye, but let's see, but see the thing is that people in the office. Right. George Ricky, not forgetting his dear wife Edie. And I had an exhibition in Glasgow. 
in, believe it or not, in the Strathclyde Gallery, Collins Gallery, and uh, in walks George Rickey and his wife, out of the blue, tip top first class American sculptor. And I showed him round the exhibition and he liked it. And he said he, he was, at least he was interested in it. And we can head off from that moment a friendship. And then he sent me this book, a substantial book, and he sent it, dedicated it to me. And, and in the book, uh, as it is, George Rickey, for my friend and fellow welder with best wishes, George Rickey, in Gurk, May the 24th, 1982, well back that now, and ever since then, of course, I've taken an interest in uh, what uh, Ricky has done. Unfortunately, he died, because he was older than me, and he died, and his family died as well. Edie died, Edie, Ricky, a very feisty lady, but he sent me this letter which I'll read to you now. Uh -huh. Dear George Wiley, I enjoyed your sculptures. They deserve a wider audience. Vidians. You like that word, Vidian. Than, than they seem to be getting, and I would be glad to help if there is a way for me to be useful. Your low-keyed commentary is very helpful, possibly essential, I have the feeling that your statement, your language, is twofold, both visual and verbal, and that you seriously underplay the latter. The text, either spoken or written, should accompany the objects with virtually equal rank. Hmm. I never ever put much credence in that until now. <laughs> I, maybe I should write a bit more about what I'm doing, because it's a wee bit different from the usual. And it maybe really helps the public to get into it. However, the labels, are, the labels I'm using are not large enough to do this and it should be expanded into commentary and in size. Your citing of Steinberg is apt, that Saul Steinberg, American humorist, cartoonist and so on. Good artist actually. And both, because you're both serious satirists. No, you are more comic as me. He uses no words unless they are themselves part of the idea. When they are often introduced as highly visual components as well. I think that this is not for you. You are not a wordplay artist. However, the context of your images, their references or reference are important. Yet it cannot be assumed that, that your public which is essential to satirists, can supply them. The public needs the help that I was lucky enough to get from you. Crookshank and Rollinson and Dolly knew this and made their spoken lives fill out the context. Could you not create an equivalent either with prefatory comment such as you gave me on the ar arpeggio of Jesus tape? or the busy prose of your Collins announcement, or slightly doggerel accompaniment writ large enough so that it is gathered in and digested simultaneously with the object and without change of mental or ocular focus. This would mean at least poster-sized text designed and written perhaps with the same zany proportions to the everyday world that your objects have and also with their slapdash but highly efficient technology. Perhaps in a college technique to match your ineffable welding. Some pieces need this more than others. You might consider a much smaller exhibition, that is, fewer pieces with a very much expanded presentation. I would be glad to help you find a larger audience Though I should really put it the other way, 
help them to find you. There are practically practical difficulties. Transport to the UK or the continent is an effective deterrent. It frightens off dealers who can lose money on a successful show. Calder went to Japan with a box full of metal parts. They said, where are the sculptures? But in a week they had them, duty free. I wonder how you would do in New York or Berlin with borrowed welding equipment, a studio, a scrapyard, a head full of ideas, and say three months with two standby air tickets and a suitcase instead of two or three tons of crates and a customs inspector. Could you produce 20 pieces or would you need a year? Could you finance either? Targets I have in mind are the artist program in Berlin or the Bethanian colony which follows the example of Richard Riley's London Docks or PS1 in New York with students in a former school or Hand Hollow Foundation, a tiny isolated colony of artists two and a half hours outside New York with living accommodation and access to welding shops or the Sculpture Centre in Princeton, New Jersey, New Jersey. One hour from New York, half research, half production facilities devoted to technical research and production. Best wishes and thanks for the preview. Yours, George Rickey, signed P.S. Forgive me for the offering what may appear to be advice. It is rather Oliver asking for more. Well, uh, I must say, I feel the presence of dear George because of these films, because of this extraordinary exhibition of his unique art. Let's face it, uh, there's only one George Wiley. Mm -hmm. And we weren't ready for him. Uh, certainly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're still not ready for George. Um, he, how can I put it, he's a force of nature. And he has something very serious to say, but with a very light-hearted touch. Old times, old times, said the captain. By Jove, I was in Trum that day. I never saw finer weather than nicer girls. Ugh, it was just imagination. We would pass the base of Butte now. I know the only stones with red and white paint on them. They're good enough for the tourists. <laughs> Cheers, George.